Jamal Nias here with the horror icon himself, James Jude Courtney. Michael Myers, we've just spoken to Nick Castle, the OG. You've been sat near each other all weekend at For the Love of Horror. How amazing is it to be around Nick? You know, you were around Nick throughout the, the films anyway. He had some cameos, but man, he, he well and truly passed the torch to you in that trilogy. You, you made that character your own. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, actually, the, the, in 2018, uh, Nick did the, uh, we did the passing of the torch. So um, that was the, you know, he came into the window, Laurie Strode pulls up. That was Nick in the window. Right. I was the mask in the mirror because the uh, special effects people were shooting a weapon about two feet behind me and a foot to the side. So Nick didn't want to be anywhere near a gun. And so they shot that by me. That was the passing of the torch. He actually was not in Halloween Kills. Okay. And then in Halloween Ends, he played the flasher. You know, so he didn't play any Michael Myers character. Wow. So the torch had been passed, and that was it. Done deal. Um, Nick and I, he came into the uh, 2018 um, filming about three, uh, about three weeks late. We, we have never once discussed the character. Not once. We've never talked about it. He came in and um, immediately we knew we were just fast friends. And we've been, we've been you know, like close mates ever since. Just just good buddies. What was it like being a part of Jamie Lee Curtis's goodbye to the franchise as well? Because that's such a testament to you as an actor and a performer as well. To she, She's one of the ultimate final girls, probably the ultimate final girl in the history of horror. And you were a part of her goodbye to the most beloved franchise in the history of horror. Oh my! It's it's um. It, it, first of all, it's such an honor to have worked with her and to be a part of this franchise, and to be a part of that with Jamie. Um, and you know the the finale uh, between Jamie and myself, uh, we both agree that it's the most deep, the most deep and profound thing we've ever done on film. And for Jamie to say that's quite a quite a statement with her with her resume. Um, you know, we were both bruised from uh, shoulder to knees um, from the fights. She does. She's just she's wicked tough. I mean, she's wicked tough, and. But we had this really, so when we started the, um, we were about to start shooting that scene and it took days, um, we stepped off to the side and went beat by beat and, and started talking about how this was going to go. We both had tears streaming down our cheeks. Wow. Such a deeply emotional um, scene. And, and at one point I'm laying on the, uh, on the table and they um, were putting prosthetics on my neck so they could get the blood out and adjusting lights. And... Um, and I couldn't move for an hour. And she walked up and, and held my hand, closed her eyes, and we both just closed our eyes and held hands for an hour, literally an hour, just holding hands like, like lovers do. And, and in that scene, we, I know because we've talked about this, she and I, um, we experienced love, we experienced hate, we experienced fear. We both wanted to live, we both wanted to die, we both wanted to kill. But these emotions were just all over the place and they're ebbing and flowing and swirling. And so, you know, the power of that, that final um, goodbye was, was so much more than just a film. You know, for her, it was, you know, truly the closing of something she's carried for, you know, her life. Yeah, because it's such a strange relationship when you think about it between Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. Like, Michael Myers represents both fear and strength to Laurie. Like, lo without Michael Myers, Laurie wouldn't have been able to have shown the true nature of the person that she is and the heroism that she's shown throughout the whole franchise. So that probably exuberates over to Jamie Lee Curtis's life as well in, in the same way and your own as well. Well, truly, it's, it's the hero's journey, isn't it? And, and you know, where where are we or who are we if we've not been challenged in life? So it's not the challenges, it's it's how we handle those challenges, right? And every one of us has been, you know, every one of us has been down on our knees. Every one of us has been, you know, pained by loss and death or, or, or failure or has made egregious errors in our lives. If we've, har you know, we've harmed somebody, we've made mistakes. Um, these trilogies, you know, are really a reflection of what it means to be human. And Jamie's life, you know, she's been sober, what, 20 some odd years now. Um, her childhood was not easy. It was rough. And, you know, so you, you look at these these issues that David and Danny and, and the other writers so so brilliantly, you know, wrote, you know, put down on paper in these in these screenplays and then how David directed them and, and, and how we get to, you know, sort of embody what it means to be a human being, including the shape. And, you know, so for the depth, you know, David told me in 2018, um, he said he'd only worked with one other actor who could go as deep and dark as I was going. And that gentleman ended up in a psych ward for two months. He had a psychotic break. Um, but for me, I have a very specific um, technique that I used 
in this film, um, I protected myself for the Blue Ring of Protection from Archangel Michael. And I do a lot of breath work. Uh, Max Strom is a guy who I've known for decades. He teaches breathing. So I would breathe that, the shape in, the character in. And then once that, char that character's in me, whether I'm wearing the mask or not wearing the mask, um, it's not me anymore. But then when, we, when I hear check the gate, when I know we're moving on to a new setup, then, um, then I breathe the character out and I'm back to me again. And the same thing happens when they put the mask on. I can't put that mask on myself. It has to be applied to me because it's form fitted to my face. So every time Chris Nelson or the assistants would all put the mask on me, I become a different person. It's not me. And, and so, you know, there's, there's metaphor there as well. You know, I mean, how many times have, you know, we, someone in life gone, oh, that's not me. Why did I do that? That's not me. I mean, that's a small reflection of a grander, you know, Michael Myers, the shape. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a, I think it's quite brilliant what David created. When you say it wasn't you, can you even recall thoughts that were going through your mind when you were playing Michael Myers? Or is it sort of like a, a bit of a blackout effect where you're just so not attached to that character? You, you are James and that is Michael. Oh yeah. It's, it's not, well, the only part of me that's there is enough to, um, to make sure nobody gets hurt, to make sure I don't get hurt, to make sure I have my blocking. So there's all the technical aspects of what it takes to to play a character, and especially when you're then in the midst of violence, you know, when you're when you're when you're fighting and when you're you're dealing with weapons. Um, but no, there is no thought processes. I mean, it's it's just really there's a very small part of my consciousness that's there, and you know, in the Greek tradition, um, the ancient Greeks believed that the actors were 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 basically channeling other spirits. And um, I have a wonderful, uh, he's my spirit guide of sorts, uh, Basil Rathbone, wonderful old British actor who was the highest paid um, character actor in Hollywood for decades, 30s, 40s, 50s. Um, he played Sherlock Holmes. He played in tons and tons of movies, but he was a bad guy a lot. And he was also a deeply metaphysical man. And um, he's come to me in dreams, literally in dreams. And so I felt Basil's presence through this whole process making these films. He was a notorious bad guy on film and, you know, one of the nicest guys in the world off, you know, off screen. Wow. Wow. It's, it's incredible to hear how, how deep you've gone with the character because like people that aren't interested in horror and maybe have gone and watched the film just to go and see a fun film at the cinema, they might not recognize how much you've put into the role because they just think it's just a guy wearing a mask. It doesn't need to be that much of a emotive and spiritual awakening happening in you to bring that out but it's very very clear talking to you that it has deeply deeply affected you because it is one of the most beloved characters in the history of horror we've seen it here this weekend you've had the biggest line all weekend people queuing up to meet you like it affects people so so much yeah yeah it's it, you know it's it's amazing um I, I i think you can't lie to an audience you've got to tell the truth and james cagney said um in order to be a good actor you, you've got to stand on two feet and tell the truth and, you know, the, the only people that will tell you, ah, oh, it's just a stuntman, put a mask on any stuntman, are the studio executives that couldn't act their way out of a wet paper bag. Mm -hmm. You know, these are guys, you know, the, the, the soulless people, David, you know, Zazoff and Bob Iger, and these guys have zero concept of what it takes to do what we do. Um, they know how to run a business. Well, yeah, they know how to run a business. Um, but really, you know, the, 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 the fact is... Um, it's such a deeply spiritual experience and we're living it. And, you know, from a medical point of view, we know that when we're doing this as actors, our bodies don't know the difference. And so when we're experiencing rage or fear or, you know, or, or immersing ourselves in PTSD or whatever it is our characters are portraying, we are living that. You know, we're living that. It's an effect. It's affecting our brain chemistry. It's affecting our hormones. It's affecting our heart rate. And so, um, you know, it, it's a deep, I mean, there's a reason why, People go to RADA and Lambda. There's a people, you know, and, 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 and go to conservatories and study so hard. And, and there's a reason why so few people can actually make it as an actor because it's an incredibly difficult thing to do. You just can't lie. And, and you have to be willing to, you know, open yourself up to thoughts and emotions and, and, and perspectives that you wouldn't ordinarily as a human being consider. And sometimes when you're playing dark characters, you know, it's so it's the antithesis of what we were raised to be, yeah. you know, but you have to embrace it fully without judgment, you know? And so um, I, I think that the immersion is then allows the audience to look at it and their subconscious understands that, oh, wait a minute, I have that in me too. 
it's so amazing how many um, firefighters, police, you know, emergency room people um, watch these movies to relax after traumatic events. I've had like literally military guys come up to me and go, they've been in firefights, body parts flying, their mates dying. They go back and watch these movies to decompress. And so I think what happens is the, the, they, they are releasing um, that pathos subconsciously by watching these films. And I have to say, man, I've met clearly, you know, hundreds of thousands of horror fans, you know, in these four years. And to the person, they're, they're the kindest, gentlest, sweetest people you ever meet. And I think it's because of the same thing. I think they're id, you know, the subconscious releases by watching these films. And you go to these conventions, man, and it's like, you know, everything goes out the window. Race, religion, socioeconomics, you know, sexual orientation, all these things that allegedly divide us as human beings. It all goes out the window because we're there with a shared passion. And and we're there with such joy and happiness. And, you know, man, I, I wish the whole world could could live like a freaking horror convention, yeah. you know? And, and I mean, it'd be, a, it'd be a different world. Like you said, we're all drawn together by this love. And... I know you mentioned the the final scenes with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and how amazing of a moment that was. But what were some of the most challenging scenes for you to film as an actor throughout the whole trilogy? Well, I, you know, emotionally, there was nothing challenged, be, challenging for me because once I locked into what I was doing, I just, you know, once I breathe into it, it's the same. Everything is the same. I'm the same character. Um it was more the the joy of the ride, you know, because I got to live something that very few human beings would ever get to live, yeah. you know, and I don't have to end up in a penitentiary for the rest of my life, you know, to do it. Yeah. Um, and, and then to work with, um, you know, these incredibly, you know, like David Gordon Green and Danny McBride and Chris Nelson, the special effects makeup guy. So I, I call him shape maker because he co-created this character with me in a way um he created that mask and that mask is such a such an integral part of what happens to me when when the mask goes on and certainly i'm still that same character without the mask but you know when we had that scene in 2018 where i pull a mask out for the first time and i put it on in the gas station in the gas station yeah, yeah i mean like the people around you know shooting that film were literally gasping you know Sick scene. Yeah, Such an awesome yeah. Scene. Yeah, and so you know, it's um, I don't know. It's so multi-layered, and and I feel such immense gratitude for, you know, for being able to 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 play this role, and but it took all this time in my life, you know, working as an actor, working as a stuntman, all the work I've done on myself psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, all the relationships I've had. The culmination of all these things is what has created what eventually became the shape. Was it emotional seeing yourself on, on the big screen for the first time back in 2018? What was that experience like? And hearing John Carpenter's soundtrack reimagined for the 2018 version as well, you being a part of this whole experience. Well, there's two answers to that. Um, first of all, I hate watching myself. That's not why I do it. I, I don't like it. I, I, when I'm in front of a camera, when I'm working as an actor or if I'm doing stunts or whatever, I, um, I have zero stress. I wish I could live my entire life in that bubble because I'm just, I'm so focused. I'm so relaxed. Um, everything, everything works. Even when it's not working, it's working. Um, but, you know, so when I, but when I sit down to watch a, a screening or a premiere, um, I sweat bullets, man. You know, because I'm going to start judging myself. I'm going to start going, ooh, I could have changed. Oh, you know, I mean, it's, it, then I become technical mm -hmm. and I start, you know, I start nitpicking because, you know, and that's not what I want to do. Once I've committed to it, I've done it, it's over. Um, the other side of that is watching the mastery of John Carpenter's soundtrack of, you know, um, uh, of the cinematography of, you know, the lighting and all, you know, the, oh, the wardrobe, my God, wardrobe and wardrobe means so much. You put a wardrobe on, man, you change, you know? So all these little elements come together. And so that's the fun part of watching these films for me. And especially on the big screen, these were meant to be seen on the big screen. Awesome to stream them, awesome to have a DVD, but they were meant to be seen in the cinema. Yeah, because there's talks of it being potentially a TV show, but they've also said alongside that they can continue the films. What do you make of the idea of it being a television show as well? Well, I trust Malik Akkad is a very good friend of mine. I, I, I love him deeply and his uh, business partner, Ryan Freeman. Um, I trust that they're going to make the decisions that are going to be the best for the, for the franchise. So the way I look at it, I think they're, they're going to explore another universe. Um, I have no doubt that eventually they'll go back to the cinema. Eventually they'll go back to making some iteration of this story. 
So I'm fascinated to see where they're going to take it and, and you know, what other wonderfully talented people they're going to bring in to, to explore that universe and what gifts they're going to bring us, you know, in that, in that, in that path. Amazing. It's been an absolute honor speaking to you. As I said, I am, like everyone else here, a massive fan of the franchise and the trilogy that you starred in. Absolutely loved all of those films. So appreciate the time and enjoy the rest of the weekend, man. Thank you so uh, yeah, much. Yeah, thank you, man. And, and and thanks to all you guys here. I mean, everybody here has done such a wonderful job. And the and the, the people here in Manchester and England, you know, everybody who's come, even from, you know, from the mainland, you know, from Sweden and Germany and Denmark. And, and but it's been really, really wonderful being with these folks from, you know, from the UK because um, I've loved this place. I've been coming here since 1975, since I graduated from high school. And, um, and, and, I can tell you that this is one of my favorite places in the world and especially Manchester. Thanks so much, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much, bro. Thanks, bro.